The Cadwell Lab presents Not to Protect the Intestine from Colonization by Bacteroides vulgaris by Deepshika Ramanan and Ken Cadwell. Our intestines are colonized by trillions of microbes that are collectively called the microbiota. The microbiota includes all kinds of bacteria, some of which are friendly and help digest food. There are also bacteria that can be harmful, but these are usually kept in check by your immune system. In a healthy individual, our immune system ignores the harmless bacteria and only fights harmful ones. This balance is important because an excessive immune reaction, also known as inflammation, could damage the intestine and cause inflammatory bowel diseases like Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Our laboratory is interested in understanding how our body achieves this balanced immune response in the presence of all these different kinds of bacteria that make up the intestinal microbiota. In this study, we examine NOD2, a gene that is important for detecting bacteria and generating an immune response. Many inflammatory bowel disease patients have mutations in NOD2, which begs the question, why are mutations that decrease the immune response to bacteria associated with a disease that is caused by an excessive immune response? To examine this question, we used modern technology and specialized conditions to carefully compare control mice with mice deficient in NOD2, also known as not to knockout mice. Control mice have lots of goblet cells that produce mucus, which forms a layer that protects the intestine from damage. In contrast, we found that not to knockout mice develop several intestinal abnormalities, including a decrease in both the number of goblet cells and the mucus granules they produce, leading to a reduced mucus layer. We also found that not two knockout mice were heavily colonized by a bacterium called Bacteroides vulgaris, and if you chemically injure the intestine of these mice, they develop inflammatory disease. By performing experiments in which we remove Bacteroides vulgaris and put it back in, we were able to determine the order of events. First, not two mutation leads to a partial decrease in immune responses that allows Bacteroides vulgaris to come in and replace other bacteria in the intestine. Next, a different branch of the immune system called the TLR mighty 88 pathway senses bacteroides and leads to production of an inflammatory molecule called interferon gamma by a special type of T cell called the intraepithelial lymphocyte. Then interferon gamma causes defects in goblet cells and mucus production, leading to sustained colonization by bacteroides. Finally, if you have decreased mucus production, increases in bacteroides and other intestinal abnormalities, then all it takes is a little bit of damage to push this system over the edge, and now more harmful bacteria could come in and you can end up with chronic inflammation and disease. To summarize, we discovered an important role for NOD2 in preventing colonization by Bacteroides vulgaris. NOD2 mutation allows the initial colonization to occur, and then other parts of the immune system respond with excessive force, causing collateral damage. This could be the reason why NOD2 mutations are associated with inflammatory bowel disease. Although our study is limited by the fact that we use genetically engineered mice, Bacteroides vulgaris has been isolated from patients, so a similar process could be occurring in humans. Also, not all inflammatory bowel disease patients have not to mutations. It's possible that other mutations cause disease in a different way. Indeed, we previously demonstrated that mice with mutation in another inflammatory bowel disease gene called ATG16L1 develop intestinal abnormalities in response to a mouse norovirus. Therefore, inflammatory bowel disease is complex, but we're optimistic that these kinds of studies will help us understand and treat this devastating disease. This work was performed at the Skirball Institute at NYU School of Medicine and the Department of Microbiology. It was funded in part by the NIH and CCFA, and special thanks to our collaborators and many others who made this project possible. This has been a Cadwell Lab presentation. For more information, please read our paper published in Immunity and visit www.cadwelllab.med.nyu.edu.